This being the 31st championship, means it's, and we have them every two years, means we've been doing this for 62 years. So there's quite a bit of history behind it. And uh, it's, it's, it's important to us to uh, expand, have skydiving around the world. We have uh, nearly 100 countries involved in, in parachuting and uh, it develops the sport in the different countries, these, these international competitions. As chairman of the International Parachuting Commission, Graham travels the world promoting the sport, but he still competes, having fallen in love with parachuting over 40 years ago. Well, I was quite young when I was, went up to Papua New Guinea uh, on a placement, and uh, it was quite hot up there. It was a bit too hot for rugby and hockey, which I used to play, so uh, a chap there at the uh, government department I was working with introduced me to skydiving and uh, I ended up doing one jump and never stopped. There was always a competitive development there. Even when I started we had some small competitions of landing in a target which made of sawdust in those days at the size of a dinner plate. You can see the, from the accuracy here that it's come a long way from a dinner plate to a two centimetre sized disc. It only measures out to 16 centimetres and uh, once you're beyond a few centimetres you've got, you're out of the running. So. It's really a, a close technique. The biggest change was in the parachutes, from uh, old surplus military parachutes to the advanced technology you see today of the, uh, the, the foil type parachute with uh, low wing loading and you know, slow speed and slow rate of descent, enabling the skydiver to uh, uh, try and land as accurately as he can on, on the target.